The city of Seattle is seeing long-term consequences of an extended eviction moratorium. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's gonna be going over the unintended consequences of a long-term eviction moratorium. Now, as you know, Seattle is one of the most progressive, most left-leaning, most tenant-friendly places in the entire country. And they actually still have a local eviction moratorium going on. So it's really, really bad for the landlords there who are just trying to operate their business and you know get things rolling like normal. Because simply put, they are just eating losses. Now, before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you think that Seattle is actually going to allow their eviction moratorium to expire next month? Keep in mind, middle of the winter, you know, and as I said, in the case of New York, in the middle of the winter, nobody wants to be kicking tenants out of their places. So I believe I had read that in Washington state or maybe in the city of Seattle itself, they even said they had already passed a, a ordinance saying they weren't going to be doing winter evictions. So even if the eviction moratorium comes to an end, I don't think any evictions are going to be happening there. So... This article comes from ricochet.com and it says unintended consequences of a long term or of a long eviction moratorium. And let's see what it says. The city of Seattle has had an eviction moratorium in place since early 2020 and account of on account of so many lower income people losing their jobs when the state and local governments made restaurants, bars and other eating and drinking establishments closed for all inside activities. That meant thousands of Seattle residents were absolved of rent payments and landlords received little income. The moratorium has recently been extended by the lame duck mayor into January 2022 leading some small landlords to sell their properties and leave the city or simply lose that rental income. An art article published on the King website in September details how Seattle is supporting its renters at the expense of its landlords. Yeah, and that, that is exactly what happened. A lot of landlords just got completely out of the rental business, especially those who owned single family homes. So they knew they could sell those properties to owner occupants because the real estate market has been on fire. There's no issue selling. And it's much better to sell, get completely out of the rental business than it is to eat thousands and thousands of dollars of losses, especially if your tenant doesn't qualify for the rental assistance. And so, you know, if you if your tenant doesn't qualify for the rental assistance and you're just eating those losses, but somehow you still can't evict that person, then you have a big, big problem. And that's something these politicians never even thought about. They never considered what landlords actually go through. So as I've said many, many times before, the majority of landlords own one, maybe two properties at most. OK, and a lot of the times it's a property that they used to live in. So it, it's a house they used to live in. And rather than selling it, they decided to just turn it into a rental and then they moved on to a different place. So they might have this one property and now you've got a tenant in there who isn't paying any rent. Yet you still have your mortgage. You still have your insurance. You still have your taxes. You have any repairs that are necessary that you have to cover. So this left landlords in a horrible, horrible position. So some landlords, they were able to get um, forbearance on their mortgages, but not all of them. And, you know, just because you had forbearance doesn't mean that, hey, the bank isn't going to come and ask for their money at some point in time. And I, we probably are reaching that point in time right now. But let's continue with this article. This week, Como published an article referring to the squalor at a South Seattle house and its effects not only on the landlord of that rental property, but the rest of the neighborhood. Since the renter cannot be evicted under current city law, there's little the landlord can do to maintain his property. So the renter dirties the neighborhood and the landlord cannot sell the property since he can't gain access to get the filthy front yard cleaned up. Mahari Hapt owns the nuisance property and said his renter has refused to clean up the property, even though the landlord is now being fined by the city. Since he is the property owner, the contents on the site are ultimately his responsibility. But his options are limited because of protections for renters in place for Seattle residents as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Yeah, so what, what do they expect this guy to do? I mean, go out of his way. I mean, I mean, he could go in there and completely clean everything up if he has the money. But keep in mind, this guy hasn't been paying rent. So the money that you would normally use for maintenance and for taking care of a property, well, that's coming out of your tenant's rent. And you can't get rid of this bad tenant. So this tenant is tearing up the property, you know, creating a nuisance. You're getting fined by the city and you can't get rid of this guy. This is completely ridiculous. It violates the terms of nine, you know, of, of my leases. I know if I'm getting fined by the city for garbage that my tenant is leaving around, then I want to get that tenant out of there. But you, you see what the problem is, right? There was no thought or consideration put into mind when they put these eviction moratoriums in place into bad tenants. They just made the assumption, oh, well, all tenants are good. And that's a bunch of garbage. And we all know that. Okay, so I hope that, you know, they, they they just allowed this eviction moratorium to expire come January because this is really, really affecting not just the landlord and their property, but like they said in the article, it's affecting the neighborhood. Okay, the whole neighborhood is worse because of this bad tenant that they can't get rid of. The article also mentions that the landlord of the house next door cannot rent his property since the house mentioned above drives prospective renters away. Even if Mr. Hapt wanted to sell his house, no one would buy it in its current condition. So did Mayor Durkin and the radical leftist city council mean this to happen when they extended the eviction moratorium? Seattle has had an anti-business bias for years and landlords there are not highly thought of. As usual, some groups of Seattle residents are coddled, homeless, renters, criminals, <laughs> and some are ignored. Law-abiding citizens, homeowners, and small landlords because they pay the bills and are taken for granted. Yeah, and I think that's the way in a lot of these very progressive cities, okay? The people who are paying the taxes, the people who are you know, maintaining the properties, you know, the, the small business owners, the landlords, the property owners are forgotten about because simply put, they're the minority in these places. Instead, what you end up with is, you know, progressives who... I don't doubt that they mean well, but I don't think that they understand the consequences of these policies that they put in place on how much they hurt you know, small business. And guess what? If small businesses and landlords, if they leave the city, then the city as a whole becomes a worse place. Okay. You don't want a city without any businesses in it. You don't want a city where, you know, it's just a bunch of, you know, slumlords running it because all the good landlords had to leave because they were being punished by ridiculously, um, overreach from the government. Okay. So, <sighs> interesting article and you know I, I gotta say i agree with the people writing it even though you know it, it's a much more right-leaning article obviously okay so i'll uh continue and uh let's finish this up i have to feel sorry for ordinary seattle residents covid restrictions are onerous in seattle and king county and the landscape is sullied by homeless tents everywhere I wonder why people put up with it. <laughs> and I, I wonder sometimes too, okay? I've heard about all the problems and everything, but from what I hear, you know, Seattle itself, the area, the, the landscape around there, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful mountains nearby, um, nice climate, you know, and the we I mean, the weather maybe not the best. I mean, it depends on what you like, what you don't like. But yeah, the natural environment itself, it sounds absolutely amazing. But, you know, you bring in all of these very left-leaning, very progressive politics, and I, I just wouldn't want to live at least within the city limits, you know? <laughs> Probably not within the state of Washington because it, it just doesn't align with what I like and you know what I'm used to probably be a great place to visit in fact I have a trip planned there for early January for work so I'm gonna be checking out Seattle if I can and I'll you know see what the place is like you know and I know there's a lot of people up there who don't who don't want to put up with this kind of stuff but their voices aren't being heard right now especially those of the landlords who own properties and are just trying to make you know money and pay their bills so yeah i mean this is probably um a horrible situation for landlords to be in right now and i really do feel for you so hang in there if you're up in seattle and you're a landlord a property owner if you decide to sell i won't be surprised <laughs>